check my email and I decide to answer later Another cup of coffee and I drag myself to work My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep and work I am not boring, I just stick to what I know Sitting there at work and I realized I forgot to wake up. I can't be productive when I'm dreaming about a sheep. Good morning. My name is Olivia and I've decided to start filming reading vlogs for my channel. So you'll have the opportunity to follow me around for the next several days and I'll be updating you with my reading progress and what I'm doing throughout the day. Also, I think this mug is really cute. It says decaf on the one side and caffeinated on the other side. I definitely connect with that caffeinated side. So today is Tuesday, July 31st, and it's about 6.45 in the morning, which is a pretty typical start time for my day. I have a fairly busy day today. I want to film a few YouTube videos, take some Instagram photos, and study for the MCATs. If you didn't know, I'm pre-med and a junior in college right now, so I'm planning to take the MCATs in December or January, and I'm trying to get a head start on studying. With respect to reading, I am currently in the middle of two books, and I'm hoping to finish at least one of those today. The first book is Still House Lake by Rachel Kane, and I'm about 195 pages into this one out of 280 total, so I think this is pretty feasible for me to finish it up today. It had a bit of a slow start, and I actually considered putting it down and picking up something else instead, but it finally started to pick up, and now I'm really intrigued as to where the plot is going. There have been a few character twists that I hadn't seen coming and now I'm really invested in this plot and I want to see how it's going to unravel. The second book that I'm in the middle of is an ebook that I borrowed from the library and it's The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. I read the Twilight series at least four or five years ago now. While I enjoyed the story, I definitely knew that there wasn't much literary merit to the series. Her writing style left a little something to be desired and I'm finding that true in The Chemist as well. The writing is one of the things that's irking me the most, as well as the protagonist. Her obsessive and constantly calculating personality is really starting to grate on my nerves, so this should be an interesting one. I'm 22% of the way through the book right now, so I'm going to give it a little bit more time before I decide whether or not I'll be DNFing it. Since it's such a beautiful day, I think I'm going to film some videos quickly and then head outside to study for the MCAT. It's a little bit after 10 and I just finished up filming, so now I'm going to head outside and study for the MCATs. I go upstairs and get myself another cup of coffee. I get downstairs and then I spill it on the floor. Well, my life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep and work. If you're not familiar with the MCAT, it stands for the Medical College Admission Test. It's often compared to the SAT or the ACT, but on steroids. It's essentially an eight hour long exam that covers a lot of pre-medical course material, and most US medical schools require your score when you're applying. It covers quite a bit of content, so I'm trying to start studying as early as I can and get the best score possible my first time around. I've been using the Kaplan seven book set to study for the exam, and I've been going through subject by subject, Right now, I'm on the biology review, and hopefully I'll be in a good spot when I go back to school.
1.30 and I just came back inside. I'm all finished studying for the MCATs for the day and I think it was just in time because it's starting to look very gray and cloudy out so I think rain is on the way. I'm going to take a few Instagram photos before it gets too dark and then I'm going to sit down to read. It's 10.15 and I have about 30 pages left in Still House Lake. I'm hoping to finish this one up tonight and I'll share more thoughts in the morning. Cup of coffee in the morning and I get the paper I check the headlines and decide that I am bored I check my email and I decide to answer later Another cup of coffee and I drag myself to work My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep and work I am not boring, I just stick to what I know Sitting there at work and I realized I forgot to wake up I can't be productive when I'm dreaming about a sheep I go upstairs and get myself another cup of coffee I get downstairs and then I spill it on the floor Well my life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep and work I am not boring, I just stick to what I know morning. It's about 8 o'clock on Wednesday and I started off my morning with a run. For the rest of the day, I'm planning to study for the MCATs, edit a few videos, and get some more reading done. Reading-wise, I finished Still House Lake last night and I was blown away by this ending. I'll give a brief summary, but I don't want to give too much away because I think it's better to go in knowing little to nothing about thrillers. Still House Lake tells the story of Gina after she discovers that her husband is a serial killer. She's forced to rebuild her life and move from town to town with her children, constantly changing their identities to avoid the unrelenting public. When she finally settles down with her children near Stillhouse Lake, bodies begin showing up in the lake, mutilated in exactly the same way her husband liked to torture his victims. I thought the premise was intriguing and original, rather than just another rendition of the classic Gone Girl storyline. I also enjoyed the portrayal of the protagonist, Gina Royal. Instead of writing her as a broken, helpless character, Rachel Kane did an excellent job of writing a strong, independent female character. While her constant paranoia bordered on excessive, it was for a good reason. She was intelligent, resilient, and willing to stand up for herself, which was a refreshing change, to say the least. I also appreciated the raw but incredibly accurate portrayal of the public. They were very quick to condemn Gina and her husband's murders, even after she was acquitted by the courts and there was no evidence to prove otherwise. I have to admit, my initial impressions of this book weren't all that favorable. It starts off with a bang, but the next 100 pages are fairly slow and monotonous as they're trying to build the characters and their backstories. About halfway through the book is when the plot really starts to pick up though, and that's when I found myself enjoying it quite a bit more. I also wanted to add a quick disclaimer. Some of the imagery in this book is fairly gruesome, so if you're on the squeamish side, I wouldn't recommend it. I was not expecting the final twist, and it came as a pretty big surprise to me. Rachel Kane did an excellent job interweaving a few hints here and there, but making them obscure enough that you couldn't really put them all together and see the final picture. This book ended on quite the cliffhanger, so I'm eager to pick up the second book and see how the story continues to unfold. Overall, this was a 5 out of 5 star read for me. Well, my life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep, and work. I am not boring, I just stick to what I know. about noon right now. I just wrapped up my MCAT review for the day and I'm really happy with my progress so far. Right now I'm gonna head outside and take my dogs for a walk and grab some lunch. Do you want to go outside? <laughs> my life is
dogs Molly just jumped into my lap. I don't think it's because she likes me. I think she just wants to stare out the window at birds. So I guess she'll be in this update segment. I just finished editing my August DVR, which should be posted before this video. So if you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Right now, I'm going to sit down and try to read a bit of The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. I've spent the past several hours reading The Chemist and I'm now at 38% because I'm reading it as an ebook. My impression so far is not favorable to say the least. I'm planning to read to at least 50% before I definitively decide whether I'm going to mark it as a DNF. I don't think I'm compatible with Stephanie Meyer's writing style and it's really starting to get on my nerves as I'm reading. Another big issue that I've had with this book so far is the lack of explanation. The book throws you into the deep end at the very beginning, starting right off with an action-filled plot, but not giving you much of a backstory or a reason for what's currently unfolding. At 38%, I think there should be some more details about what's going on rather than continued confusion. It's no fun reading a book when you're just as lost as you were on page one. Another negative for me is the protagonist. I can't connect with her, and I have very little sympathy for the situations that she's in. She takes things to an extreme and comes across as somewhat robotic and emotionless. While this isn't always a bad thing, she hasn't had any character development so far and has remained relatively stagnant. I'm going to give this book just a little bit longer to see if it can win me over, but I don't have the most favorable impression so far. And with that, I'm going to close out this reading vlog. Let me know in the comments if you liked this style of video and what types of videos you would like to see in the future. And I'll see you in my next one.